What is going on, everybody? It is February 5th, 2024. Daylock episode over NQ in the live stream. And then a PM session silver bullet trade that I took. I posted on my page, the execution on Twitter as well. So you guys were able to see that. Make sure it is the 5th, it is. Um, so going over today on the live stream, I took a loss, as you all saw. And after I got off the session, went to the gym, got some lunch and, and came back to the charts. And I was able to see that there was a pretty clear market maker buy model. And we were basically at the second stage distribution of it. The original unicorn. I got a question on that today. It is the original unicorn. There's another version that people have made up. Um, I believe ICT's actually mentioned it, which is the breaker with a fair value gap inside of it. But the original unicorn is the second stage distribution of a market maker seller buy model. And it's called that because it's the easiest low hanging fruit entry out of the entire skeleton of it, right? But today I'm just reviewing price and I'll review my loss and the reason why I took it, and I'm not even upset about it, it dollar index is still, it, it's just such a decoupled market right now where dollar index is trading off higher. And that should, uh, it should push NQ lower. With this amount of movement, it should. And it's just completely decoupled away from it. So it's making it pretty difficult for me to read NQ. And it's the reason why I was looking for shorts today on NQ. And I stopped out because I was utilizing dollar index as a confluence. And it just was not willing to adhere to it. So when you're in a decoupled market, it makes it difficult because I'm trying to lean on dollar index. I'm trying to lean on that analysis, but it's just, it's not providing any sort of confluence with it. So more or less at this moment, I'm just leaning on NQ and leaning on the draw, draw liquidity that it has. And if it wants to continuously press higher alongside dollar index, then I'm going to do that. But I would rather not. I'd rather NQ eventually drop off and be in confluence with whatever dollar index is trying to do. But I want to make note from yesterday's forecast from the weekly forecast, we're inside of this weekly SIBI here, basically met the CE of it, the dotted line there. We go down to the daily time frame and refine the weekly into the daily here. We punched up into it today. I don't see any particular reason for this thing to reverse out of here. Again, I've mentioned the idea of this possibly being a market maker buy model. With this being the original consolidation, accumulation, reaccumulation, smart money reversal, low risk buy, first stage distribution, we'd get the second stage in here or even near the top end there to the original consolidation. So if I can see dollar index pretty clearly, to me at least right now, I would, I'd want to see gravitate higher. And if that is so, then it makes it difficult to read NQ, as you guys saw today. I had somebody comment, and I'm sure you meant well, but he commented on the live stream, you know, why I lost. And, you know, I don't have an issue with it, but I actually deleted the comment because it's just, it's unnecessary. Of course, in hindsight, it's very easy to look at things and be like, yeah, that's, a, that's exactly why I lost. And I know why I lost. So there's just no need to point that out. I mean, if I was able to comment on all your losses, I'm sure I could say the same thing. So um, I'm sure the person meant well. But Looking at NQ going into tomorrow, I'm electing to believe, even though dollar index is going to continue higher, since NQ is disregarding it, I'm going to believe that NQ is going to want to run the buy side here. Because if anything, if it's going to drop lower, it would at least want to tag the buy side before potentially dropping lower. And I still don't even see that on NQ. So to me, it's it's really decoupled away from dollar index. So it may take a little bit of being in a, a decoupled market to where it could finally move into sync. And it's not like I haven't worked with this before, but it makes things a little bit more difficult. And if you haven't been in a scenario or an environment where everything's in sync and it's moving beautifully, man, it's it's such easy trading. And it's it's part of my analysis to obviously look at dollar index and utilize that. And some people will say, you know, there's no reason to look at it for the particular reason of today why I took the loss. But again, with any model, any entry pattern or, or analysis you're utilizing, there's going to be pros and cons to it. So you have to take the, the good with the bad. Looking at the daily closure of today, it was an inside day. So we closed within the previous day high and the previous day low. We didn't take out either side. So anytime you have an inside day, typically the next day is pretty explosive. It's pretty volatile on an inside day. Outside day, where you're taking out the previous day low and the previous day high, 
But you have an outside day that will typically refer to the idea that's going to be a consolidation, seek and destroy the next day because you cleared both sides, right? So to me, inside, that's a pretty good idea that tomorrow we're going to rally towards the buy side, at least taking this out. From there, I don't know how high we're going to gravitate because we're in unknown, uncharted territory. We're inside of all-time highs. So at least for now, that's going to be my focus moving into tomorrow. If you just look at today, the four-hour, very large wick in here, right? So at that time when I was selling, this was fully bearish as one full candle. So in hindsight, it's very easy to look at, you know, losses and be like, man, I shouldn't have took that. But I mean, I'm very happy with the loss. Being content with the loss and being happy with the idea, I mean, that's the best thing you could ask for. And I'm happy that people are able to see losses because it's normal. It's a part of the process. I think most people freak out when they see people lose because they, they're just not used to seeing people lose. And to me, it's it's very normal. I lose a lot. And that's not a bad thing at all. And neither should you judge yourself on that either. Looking at what happened today in general is this is what I was being weary of. And I just, I, I got caught off guard because I, I was sold on the idea. I was actually waiting. You guys saw on the live stream. There was a nice short setup that I just elected not to trade because I was looking at the idea this possibly could just run higher. I only dropped off lower and I just kind of got sold on that that last drive lower. And that happens. Again, I'm human. There's going to be times when you just make mistakes and you misread it. And I'm only really saying these things not for my own sake, but for your guys' own sake. So you understand what it's like to take a loss and how to handle it and how to go back through your day and look at the loss and be like, you know what, man, like that's in real time. That's the best thing I could have done. You can learn from it, try to make improvements, but sometimes there's nothing you can improve upon. And that's just part of your model. So looking at the one hour structure, we drop down into a discount and into the mean threshold of this down close candle, which is the bullish order block. And I even mentioned in the stream when I was in the trade, I was like, well, if I do get stopped out, it's for this particular reason, because we're still inside of a bullish dealing range. And from this low to that high, we dropped down into a discount, into the mean threshold of the bullish order block, and we closed within this previous new day opening gap. So we dig down to lower time frames in here. We drop down into this 15 minute inefficiency here, discount. And the 15 minute closed beneath the new day opening gap. So when I was reviewing today and going, why did I, you know, why was I looking at shorts? Well, dollar index is a huge confluence with that driving higher. YM, ES, we're all selling off lower. So I was electing to believe that this thing was really trying to at least reverse out of the bullish dealing range and possibly seek lower prices. <clears throat> if you look at today and what I was looking for, I was at least maybe looking for this inefficiency down here, but the 15 minute, which is the parent, was already met. So there's no reason for this to revisit the five minute. But looking at this as its entirety, there was the SIBI here that I was annotating in real time. And of course, in hindsight, it's the trade that I wish I, I took on live stream because I could have showcased a, a decent trade. But in here, I was just selling a little bit too much inside of a discount. We reached inside of that discount. I just misread it, right? So after that happened, I just moved away from the charts. I let my emotions kind of just settle and, and do something else, like going to the gym. And by the time I came back, we are residing in this area. So if you go back to the live execution, I took it on my live account as well, even though some people ask me, it's I do the paper trading even in, even in the videos, just so you guys can see the, the charts a little bit more clear in the annotations. Because my other platform doesn't have all this, you know, gadgets and stuff, the new week opening gap, new day opening gap, et cetera. So if I review just the AM session, if you guys were there, I don't want to go too much over it if you're there for the live stream, but that five minute, this inefficiency here was a really nice sell opportunity. But on the flip side, in real time, I was looking at the ideas. We reached out to the CE of that new day opening gap previous and did it want to expand out of here. So I got sold on the idea once it dumped beneath it that it was going to continue lower. Because in my mind, if dollar index was continuously rising, going higher, and this thing broke underneath the new day opening gap, to me, especially in a bearish scenario, this thing would have sold off because it's got it getting underneath a new day opening gap. But this was just simply the smart money reversal of a market maker buy model. And I just didn't see it, right? So even as a somebody who's more experienced, sometimes you just can't see in real time a market maker buy or sell model or what it's trying to 
reach for. But if you look at the one minute in here and just look at the order flow, it's a really clean market maker buy model. You have the original consolidation, which was the opening of today. It left relative equal highs up here. And on the one hour, we're reaching down into a discount. So keep that in the back of your mind, what I went over on the one hour. We're reaching down into a discount. So we have original consolidation. We have accumulation, reaccumulation. There can even be a third stage of reaccumulation. And then smart money reversal is down here. Then we drive higher, reaching up above the previous new day opening gap, reach back down into an inversion or value gap here. And then we, so we shift above this old high. We get into this for value gap there with the upper portion of the new day opening gap in here. So we just gravitate higher. I'll just kind of mark out the, uh, the run up in here. Fair value gap there. Utilize that. And I will put the, um, the executions just so you see. So I was entering in here. I got stopped out there. So if you're on the live stream, you saw that. Everything from the left side of a market maker buy or sell model can be drawn out to the right and utilize that as a confluence. So as soon as we got up above, we can utilize that as an inversion. Even if we wick above it, we can still utilize that as support. We drive higher. This is the current new week opening gap. And then really what I was particularly paying attention to, if you saw the live execution, was time. So I'm moving into, if I'm not trading, if I'm done with the AM silver bullet, I'm moving into the PM silver bullet. So as soon as I got back to the charts, I was annotating how price was relatively near in proximity to the original consolidation which is here, and we're inside of the second stage distribution. If you look at the low down here, we're running out south side liquidity. We displace higher, we drop down into the current new week opening gap, and then we drive higher again. And what are we near in proximity? We're near the original consolidation, and we're near a buy side, minor buy side liquidity pool, which is above this high. So if you saw in the execution, you could see that there's a small fair value gap in here. And the reason why I'm trusting it is because if you're near in proximity to a draw on liquidity and you've already taken out sell side, you've already displaced into a certain PDRA and you've displaced away from it, it's going to want to respect the nearest and newest inefficiency. So in here, you see price digs down into it. I'm buying. And I'm pulling off two contracts above the minor buy side liquidity pool. And I'm seeing if it can reach for the original consolidation, which is over here. You saw the execution, basically all my thoughts during the real time. I was able to pull off the two contracts, and that was that. And I let the rest of the day play out, and I'm not going to touch price. Once I reach my terminus, once I reach the original consolidation of a market maker buy or sell model, I'm done. Because I can't. I don't know where else price is going to go from there. Could continue higher, could drop off lower like we saw in here. So hopefully that was a good execution video for you guys to study and I mean, it sucks that I'm not live streaming those type of executions to show you guys in real time. But of course, there's only so much I can really do in, in a day and, you know, show you guys everything. And that's why I like the daily recaps as well, because if I take something else, at least I'm able to annotate it. As far as tomorrow, like I mentioned, I, I'm going to elect to believe we're going to run for the buy side. If anything, we may run that before even AM session comes, which is fine. I'm not going to try to chase price or trade outside of my rules in time. So we'll have to see what AM session is looking like tomorrow. I don't believe there's really any economic news driver events. So we'll just see what is playing out by that time. Again, we're still, to me, it's it's quite decoupled away from dollar index. So I'm, I want to see what the rest of the week plays out like if it starts to move in sync with dollar index after we take the buy side here. So hopefully you guys enjoyed. I appreciate all of the, uh, the new support, live streams. Um, I will be live streaming tomorrow, same time, 15 minutes before the New York Open. Till then, good luck and good trading, everybody. Be safe.